ITN News at 10 with Trevor McDonald. Celebrations and protests as Tro announces Pinochet's fate. Weapons inspectors and Iraq on collision course again. Charles urges men to join the war against breast cancer. First blood to United in the battle for Europe. And why Lord Webber's in a spin about the music industry. Good evening. The Home Secretary Jack Straw delivered his ruling today on the immediate fate of the former Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet. He said he must remain in Britain for extradition proceedings, which could end in his being put on trial for murder and torture in Spain. General Pinochet is due to make his first court appearance in London on Friday. Mr. Straw was chaired by Labour MPs in the Commons tonight, and human rights campaigners called it the birth of a new era. But Chile recalled its ambassador, and Lady Thatcher said the Home Secretary had made a grave mistake. Our senior correspondent Mark Austin reports. They were celebrating on the streets of London tonight Pinochet's opponents, including relatives and friends of those who disappeared during the General's rule. Now is the time to pay for your crimes, they chanted. I am very delighted that today justice has prevailed. But there are confrontations too this evening. This is a decision that's causing division, a decision taken by the Home Secretary that means the former dictator could now face charges of murder and torture. I've considered all the representations made to me, and in the light of the representations and of my legal obligations, I've decided to issue and authority to proceed in respect of the extradition of Senator Pinochet. Human rights lawyers are delighted but cautious. This is only the, the next stage in what could be a long process. The uh, case has to go to the magistrate uh, and then if he gives his extradition order, as he's likely to do, Pinochet can challenge that again in the High Court. General Pinochet was arrested in October at this London clinic where he was recovering from back surgery. A Spanish judge wants the former leader questioned over the deaths of Spanish citizens who were among some 4,000 Pinochet opponents killed in the 70s. The High Court soon overturned his arrest, but two weeks ago five law lords ruled by three to two that he had no immunity to prosecution. Today Jack Straw backed the law lords, and that means General Pinochet will remain in the guarded Surrey mansion he's renting while the legal process continues. Tomorrow, his lawyer is expected to go to the High Court seeking a judicial review of the Home Secretary's ruling. For Jack Straw, it's been the most sensitive decision of his career, but one in which he says politics played no part. Chile's ambassador here has criticised the move. No tribunal of a foreign country has the authority to judge a fellow Chilean citizen for crimes which may have committed in our territory. The ambassador is on his way home tonight, recalled by his government in protest. Human rights activists will see this as a landmark victory with implications for dictators around the world. General Pinochet's extradition proceedings are due to begin amid high security at a magistrate's court on Friday. But further legal wrangling is certain to follow. General Pinochet may yet be stuck in this country for months, even years to come. Mark Austin, News at 10, at the Chilean Embassy in London. Opinion in Chile was sharply divided again today, just as it was when General Pinochet was first arrested and when the law lords gave their ruling a fortnight ago. The government in Santiago called Mr. Straw's decision an attack on Chilean sovereignty. The National Security Council there is to meet on Friday. Our diplomatic editor Robert Moore reports. Tonight in the Chilean capital, Santiago, relatives of those who died and vanished during Pinochet's rule put aside their suffering for a moment to celebrate Mr. Straw's decision. Many human rights activists inside Chile say that justice would never catch up with General Pinochet if he'd been allowed to return to the country over which he ruled for 17 years. But Pinochet's supporters appeared numb, shocked that the man they regard as a hero will now endure many more months of this extraordinary legal battle. Official Chilean reaction is also one of deep dismay. Tonight, the government declared that Mr. Straw had infringed Chilean sovereignty. And in London, Lady Thatcher, a friend and ally of Mr. Pinochet, agreed, Thatcher, accusing Mr. Straw of making a grave mistake. It was a failure, she said, of political leadership, and she was supported in that view by William Hague. 
I think this has gone on for long enough now. I think it's been damaging our relations with Chile. I think it's damaging the future of democracy in Chile. And it is actually time to say that General Pinochet should go home and Chileans should be able to sort out their own problems. But instead of that happening, it seems the Spanish judge, Baltasar Garzón, may yet secure the extradition of Mr Pinochet and put the former dictator in a Madrid court charged with human rights crimes. Lawyers say such an extradition from Britain could set a precedent. This is certainly a warning, a severe warning to all uh, who, who come to these shores who uh, are in danger of extradition proceedings uh, to watch out. This evening there is little public anger in Chile, no sign of the violent anti-British demonstrations of last month. But Britain's ambassador in Santiago, Glyn Evans, will be bracing herself for a sustained diplomatic headache now that Britain has decided to let extradition proceedings continue. So certainly tonight, Britain's formal diplomatic relations with Chile are deteriorating fast. But the broader unanswered question is to what extent it may further exacerbate tensions within Chilean society and whether it might even imperil their transition to democracy. Robert Moore, News at 10, at the Foreign Office. I'm joined now by our political editor, Michael Brunson at Westminster. Mike, how tough a decision was this for the Home Secretary? I think what you might have in mind there, Trevor, is the way that so many other things have come into play. The uh, arguments between right-wingers and left-wingers in this country and the arguments going on between three countries. That is one reason why Jack Straw took the unusual step of issuing a rather detailed parliamentary answer on why he had done what he has done. Here it is, I have it in front of me. And he goes through the arguments one by one. He says we have an obligation to Spain under the European Convention on Extradition. He effectively says that overrules the arguments that William Hague was making about Chile's sovereignty and a possible trial there, though he makes clear he has considered those. He says these are very serious offences. He says they're equivalent to crimes in this country of uh, possibly of attempted murder, conspiracy to murder, and, for example, torture, though, interestingly, he rejects the possibility of charges of murder or genocide. Uh, he says that it's all well-founded, as far as he can see, in Spanish law. And, crucially, also, he says that the general is fit to stand trial. So he's trying to set out here, I think, the reasons why he has taken what he would regard as not being a political decision. But that, of course, will not satisfy many on the right wing among the Conservatives in this country. Michael Brunson, thank you. Iraq risked another flare-up in the arms inspection crisis today when it stopped inspectors going into the offices of President Saddam Hussein's ruling Ba'ath Party. The chief weapons inspector called it a very serious matter. The State Department pointedly reminded the Iraqis that American forces are still poised to strike. ITN's Ben McCarthy reports from Baghdad. Teams of UN weapons inspectors left their base in Baghdad this morning as usual to carry out further checks on sites around Iraq. But when one UN team tried to get into the headquarters of the ruling Ba'ath Party, a building we were not allowed to film, Iraqi officials demanded a list of what they were looking for, and the inspectors withdrew. Government sources here have described the UN team's action as provocative and trying to create a crisis by targeting such a sensitive site. But the chief weapons inspector at the UN, Richard Butler, says Iraq had stopped a perfectly legal visit from going ahead and described it as very serious and U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright has insisted Iraq must cooperate with the inspectors. What has to happen here is that, um, you know, they have to turn over the relevant documents. There's going to be, I gather, several inspections and that there has to be a cooperation. After the most recent crisis here in mid-November, Britain and America threatened to launch airstrikes against Iraq without warning if UN inspectors are not allowed into areas they want to visit. What's crucial now is the way this latest incident is interpreted. For the UN, it's a clear signal that its teams of inspectors are not getting the unrestricted access to sites that they've been promised. But it could also be used by Britain and the US as the reason to stop talking and take military action against Iraq instead. Ben McCarthy, News at 10, Baghdad. Businessmen and homeowners are hoping for good news on interest rates from the Bank of England. The two-day meeting of the Bank's Monetary Policy Committee ends tomorrow with widespread calls for a significant cut in the rate. A Russian was being held in Kent tonight after an astonishing walk through the, tunnel, the Channel Tunnel to France. He dodged security cameras, tunnel staff and trains until the French caught up with him at the other end and sent him back. Joe Andrews reports. 
The 36-year-old Russian decided to walk to France because he wanted to join the Foreign Legion. He set off two days ago down one of the main train tunnels. As he walked, he must have dodged up to 20 high-speed trains every hour. He managed to get through the high barbed wire fences and evade the security system. And he was just about four miles short of France when he was found covered in soot by French security guards. We are treating this extremely seriously. It is obviously a breach of our security and that is of great concern to us. Uh, we have established an inquiry and we have started that already to establish exactly what happened. Ever since it opened four years ago, there have been worries that the tunnel's security would be breached, either by humans or animals. Eurotunnel has always said it couldn't happen, but now it has. The Russian has been returned to Britain and is being held at Dover, where he's being questioned by immigration authorities. Joe Andrews, News at 10. We have more news and sports still to come tonight. Prince Charles teams up in a new drive to fight breast cancer. He says it's a men's issue too. News from Chechnya of a botched attempt to free the British hostages. Keane's goal good enough for a quarter-final place in Europe for Manchester United. And Lord Webber's frustration as he accuses music bosses of sidelining his single. Now what happens to the young kid who maybe just wants the song because it's a great song and can't buy it in any other format than an album which they may not be able to afford?